Welcome, and the show is Keeping Connected with Trevor Crow After Hours. Tonight, we're in partnership with W2W Magazine, and we're discussing divorce Fairfield County style. With me as a panel of experts, I've got Marilyn Chinitz. She is a partner with Blank Roan and also a celebrity divorce attorney. Next to her is Paula Levy, licensed marriage and family therapist and mediator. Next to Paula is Vicki Volper, collaborative attorney and mediator in Westport. And also we want to welcome Haley Rockwell, managing director for LLBH, Wealth, private wealth management in Westport. Hi Haley, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tonight we want to ask our panel, what are the critical pieces of advice you would want to give a woman who is going through divorce or maybe considering it? So I'd like to start with Haley since you're new to the panel. <laughs> All right. Um, well, e even if women aren't going through the divorce process, I always say get involved in your finances early. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of women think that either they're not equipped to or they're not good at numbers or their husband's the one that does the mm -hmm. finances. Mm -hmm. And it's just plain not true. Women are really good at managing their finances. They're diligent. They, mm -hmm. They're willing to commit to a process. They're not making rash decisions. They're actually really good at both the financial piece of running the household finances, but also with the investment piece. So I say get involved and get involved early. That is a great piece of advice. Ladies, every, every age, no matter what, please get to know your family finances. Know the passwords. Just be aware, know where the assets are, and you don't really want to be having to look for this in a crisis, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a divorce. So it's really very, very important, important uh, advice. So Marilyn, we'll start with you. From a uh, litigator standpoint, um, what would you suggest a woman who is just thinking about or starting down this, this journey? Well, I think that was the best advice you can give. And mm. I think you started early. Mm -hmm. um, marriage is a partnership. That's mm -hmm. how you started. And so as a partner, if you were going into business, you wouldn't allow what your other partner to just take over everything and, mm -hmm. and sit in the corner and not know what's going on. So that's from the beginning. When the divorce starts, or if you're contemplating divorce, you want to be able to get all the information that you can before the action starts. You want to have a real understanding of what assets you have so you can make appropriate decision. Mm -hmm. Where are the accounts? How much are in the accounts? Speak to people. Um, there's nothing illegal about doing your due diligence mm -hmm. and finding out before you make that announcement that you're ready for a divorce. And if you're blindsided by mm -hmm. a divorce and you don't have time to prepare, Surround yourself with really good experts because those are the people that are going to navigate these waters and get you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And those are people that you have to trust. So it's a good financial advisor. It's a good attorney, first and foremost. A therapist, if needed. Mm -hmm. Someone to speak uh, to concerning issues relating to your children, how to approach it with the children, not just throw a, a bomb out to them. Yes. And you have to be mindful that you are affecting a lot of other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So when you're making decisions, like any good president of a company or president of the country, they garner up and they bring good people and they surround themselves with good people who are educated who can give them advice. Don't charge into anything. Think before you make mm -hmm. the next step and really understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and don't act necessarily just on the emotion. Mm -hmm. Be logical and Very be smart thinking do. about what you're doing. Yeah, great advice. Surround yourself with good people. Maybe take a little time if you can, if you're not blindsided perhaps. Um, and take care of yourself. Um, and speaking of that, Paula Levy, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist, maybe there's an emotional component that you might really want to pay attention to. What do you suggest? Well, I know that um, a lot of times when people come in, they are concerned about their children and they're concerned mm -hmm. about the, the well-being of their family. And I think that there are many things that people can do to lessen the impact on the children especially. Um, obviously, one of the, the ways is to get expert advice as to how to tell the children what to look for as to what's normal and when to be concerned, when to get experts help for your children. But there's also, um, you know, different ways that you can approach it. For example, we find that people who mediate uh, learn to communicate a little bit better so that they're able to face mm -hmm. each other at the graduations and birthday parties and weddings because they haven't had that adversarial experience. So if you can work it out, if you can make it a non-adversarial situation, you know, we, we find that's really helpful as well. 
Mm-hmm. And Terrific. also, finally, yes. you know, your own health is the most important thing for your children as well. If you're doing okay, if you're taking care of yourself, mm-hmm. they, they really p- pick that up as well, and they usually do better if you're doing better. Absolutely. I love that. So take care of yourself. And, and of course, many of us are, uh, you know, the first thing we get worried about is our kids and their well-being and making the, the right choices. And if we don't go after each other in an adversarial way, you set the stage for life going forward and there will be birthdays and weddings and whatnot. So Vicky, Vicky any more thoughts on that or uh, more critical advice for that woman who is considering this big move? Trevor, I would advise a woman who is considering divorce to be educated about the various methods of divorce. Mm -hmm. It is very important to make an informed, educated decision about whether you need a litigator, whether you could mediate, or whether you might want to do collaborative divorce, which is sort of a hybrid process where you advocate for yourself, but you're in a settlement mode as mediation. Mm Um, The non-adversarial methods tend to allow people to maintain more control of the divorce process and to save a heck of a lot of money. Mm. And so one of the financial decisions you are going to have to make, can you afford to litigate? Mm -hmm. Is it worth litigating? Or can you save money by Mm -hmm. not litigating? Mm -hmm. It really depends. It's a very individual case-by-case decision. Mm -hmm. And people should know the different processes and make an informed decision. I, want to, I, I think that was an excellent point, as I do your point, which is that if you do well, your children do well. There's yes. no question. But I also think that just because you're a litigator doesn't mean that you don't look to amicably resolve mm-hmm. a case. Mm-hmm. And, and it may not be mediation, because in mediation, you don't have your own attorney. You have one person, a mediator. Um, in, col- in the collaborative process, you each have your own attorney. Mm-hmm. But I have to say that even as a litigator, It's almost like that extra weapon that you keep behind your back, Mm -hmm. but you come to a uh, a bargaining table and you come to the negotiation process with the same intent, which is to come out with a solution that works for everybody um, through the process of discussion and disclosure. Sometimes having the threat of a court behind you Mm -hmm. makes people a little more forthcoming right and they're not inclined to hide because they know that you ultimately can Mm -hmm. there's a cause and effect but um, you mentioned something uh, a little earlier off camera Uh, Marilyn was talking about how there are folks who really don't want their finances open in court where their competitors now can really see what's happening in their private lives and that's another good reason not to in Connecticut um, the financial disclosure can be Mm -hmm. in open court because you have hearings. So if you're going to bring a support application, it could be heard by a courtroom of people. Um, And it's very private information that you Mm -hmm. don't necessarily want out there. Mm -hmm. If you're working with a big hedge fund or you are a big corporate person, you don't want your income out Mm -hmm. there. It may not be as big as everybody thinks it is. (laughs) So there's lots of reasons why you may not want it. Um, There's also proprietary information, Mm -hmm. and that might be um, out in the public. So if you're wise and you're smart, Mm -hmm. you want to resolve those things. But sometimes, unless people feel the threat of demise, Mm -hmm. they're not coming with the objective of trying to... They need a little push. You need a little push. And that's just human nature. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that litigators are terrible. We're not creating the problems. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the solutions. Mm -hmm. And if... People can't make their own solutions, come arrive at their own solutions. Um, then we have a, a process to do that. That's not a bad process. Mm-hmm. It's a lengthy process. It could be a costly process. But clients drive that process. Mm-hmm. Um, and you need to have clients that are not hiding assets, who are really willing to be open to do the right thing. And, and I'm sure Haley has seen this, which is, those folks who really haven't been upfront in the divorce process, and, and it gets to be messy, and then they end up with dealing and with this I think situation. Haley could probably speak best to the fact that a lot of these transactions have issues um, that that really require an expertise. There's there's tax implications. There's mm-hmm. estate mm-hmm. issues, setting up uh, trusts for children. I mean, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of you know complicated areas 
that um, while everybody would like to agree to, it really takes the expertise of someone like Haley who can really mm -hmm. give that information and provide that information. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, Fairfield County, we have a lot of private equity firms, a lot of hedge funds, um, so people have a lot of illiquid assets. You don't mm -hmm. get monthly statements on them, so you've got to know where to find the information on what those assets are and how much they're worth, because it's not immediately clear that the value mm -hmm. is what's on that statement. Uh, so you really do need some help. Uh, if somebody owns a business, has an ownership interest in the right. business, how do you value that? Um, it's it's tricky, and so Very there is a point at which you need to have some outside, outside. expertise. I would point out, yeah. though, that in mediation and collaborative divorce, there is a role for outside experts. Mm -hmm. We have brought into both mediation and yeah. collaborative divorce people like Haley mm -hmm. to advise the couple, usually instead of one person representing the husband and one the wife, one person like you would be a neutral to advise the couple fairly right. instead of from an adversarial perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had a very interesting conversation. I had this wonderful panel of experts. Uh, there are some critical pieces of information here, which is, uh, to Marilyn's point, surround yourself with great experts. Uh, people who really understand. You can hire Haley, for example, who can really show you and walk you through what's going on. You would really need to know what the finances are, know where your assets are ahead of time. Don't do it in the middle of a crisis, so start working on that now. Know the passwords. I've heard horror stories about these things. And then, of course, to Paula's point, you know, this is about your family. There's a huge ripple effect. Um, how you handle the way you treat one another, and if you do it fairly, you can live together. You can go to those weddings and those graduations without having a terrible disconnect and sort of ugly feelings. And believe me, the kids feel that stuff. It's not good. I've been there. So, uh, you know, best advice go with all this great advice, get yourself surrounded by good, good people, including a good therapist, a great financial advisor, either a litigator or a mediator, depending on your situation, and just get yourself prepared and hopefully you'll transition without too much, too much horror and drama. So thank you so much for watching the show. This is Keeping Connected After Hours with Trevor Crow. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also like us on Facebook. We really love to get your opinions and your thoughts and even some questions because we might even discuss them up here on our next show. So uh, stay tuned, be in touch, and we like hearing from you.